How you been? You know, hanging in there. Excited for another one. You? Doing well, yeah. And this is, uh, you can't probably tell by our video, this is an evening episode, typically filmed in the morning. And uh, now it's night, it's dark outside, so different vibe, I, you know. I'm going to get some better equipment, I swear. I don't know if I will, but I should. But if the viewers, if all two of our viewers demand it, I want to put my gum out. That's not very, that's not very polite on a, on a video. I was going to say something, but, you know, I yeah. felt like, you know, Camden, Camden's a rogue. He does what he wants. What's my brand, you know? Chewing gum. Is it Fruit Stripe gum? Not Fruit Stripe, sorry. I, uh, I've switched to, uh, Ice Breakers, Ice Cubes, Cinnamon, and also, like a, like a 10-year-old girl, bubble gum flavor. Bubble gum. <laughs> <laughs> Are you very active on Twitter? No. Have you seen what's trending today on Twitter? Today. Well, multiple things are trending. No. I mean, like, I just, I've been loosely following all the drama, but... Oh, about Twitter? About Twitter, yeah. There's, yeah, there's that as well. But I want to get into something else. Um, get your thought on uh, Tampax's recent tweet. Tampax, oh. feminine hygiene product brand. Um, yes. Number one recommended by gynecologists. So I is it? have read on boxes. Okay, okay. so what's, what, what is it about this tweet? So today at 8.47 a.m., my time at least, they tweeted this. You're in their DMs. We're in them. We are not the same. <laughs> no, they, they didn't. Yes, currently has 22.7 thousand retweets, 15.1 thousand quotes. And 162,000 likes. Thoughts on Tampax's tweet this morning? Brilliant. I think it's hilarious. I, I can't. I don't know much about their their brand in and of themselves, so I don't know if it's if we can use the on brand stamp or not. But that's funny. They've been kind of humorous for a while. They had they had a tweet which we can show. We probably sh I'll screen share that uh, on the fourteenth of October. They tweeted, "I don't need to be real like the, the Be Real app. I need to be done with my period." Um, yeah, hey. So so <laughs> it's a long cringe. This tweet today had them trending on Twitter, and That's I haven't. Cool. I haven't scrolled like very far. I just kind of actually found this short before we started recording. It actually seems kind of like mostly negative reaction, but I also wonder if just the people who react are the one, like the angry people. Um, people are just saying like the, the, the backlash was saying that this is kind of, I'm trying to summarize a bunch of different tweets that it's implying that there's something sexual about a tampon and it, that it's in a way a, a brand that like serves women and celebrates women seems kind of like it's objectifying and like misogynistic view of periods or of, of, of tampons. Some people are saying, no, shut up. It's just funny. So there's, that's kind of, if, if you want to see the other side of saying that's not a good idea to do something like that, that's kind of been the argument, but maybe, maybe they're subscribing to, I mean, they're trending. Right, I haven't thought about Tampax in a long time, never really at all as a um, as a man. But um, but then the people are sharing some funny memes too in the comments of other Tampax related. <laughs> someone, <laughs> so <laughs> this is bad. Someone took like a flaming hot Cheetos thing, and like I'll, I'll probably I'll cut this part out, but flaming hot Tampax. <laughs> 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 like. Well, that sounds painful. So I don't know. I think it's I think it's funny. I and okay, I guess I guess that's inserting something somewhat sexual into a non sexual context. I, we do that with hamburgers and cars and everything else. So like what I don't it doesn't feel that weird to me. My first reaction was like, will that play well with 
women in general, like as a dude, I find it's funny, but then, I mean, there are plenty of women who like women and I, I don't see anything wrong with it. I think it's, I think it's smart. I think it's funny. Which is funny. It is. What's funny that about the, I don't know what the thought process was or who hit send on that, but, um, it's a feminine hygiene product, right? And it's kind of, yes, there are, there are, um, there are women who are into women, but a majority of, of that comment, kind of, I, th I think it's kind of directed to men in, 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 you know, that, that uh, phrasing or that joke that we are not the same. It's interesting that Tampax seemed to directly be calling it mostly a male audience. And I wonder how, like, when they clearly have a feminine, a, a female user um, base or customer base, I wonder how that, if that was considered, if that was intentional, if that was, I don't know. I think, I mean, with that point being made, if that was kind of their intent to speak to the dudes out there who's, who have vagina owners as partners, like, that's... And clearly the guys aren't going to, aren't, aren't going to be the normal ones to go out and buy the tampons. But I mean, yeah, they were trending on Twitter today and it didn't cost them a dollar. So I, I mean, I think it, it did the awareness piece that was probably intended to do. Do you think that Wendy's Twitter opened the door for a lot of this? Like they weren't the first one ever to do a, a, unexpected tweet i'm sure but i feel like a lot like for branded professional accounts when wendy's twitter went off a lot of copycats tried to you know do the same thing and it wasn't as good as like stop you're not twitter i mean you're not uh wendy's but i wonder if like people saw some of that stuff you, you can get away with some of that and now twitter is just kind of like a wild wild west a little bit when it comes to tweets and brands <laughs> Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Do you see, do we see brands doing weird or ag aggressive, if you will, things or edgy? Maybe we have a client using that word lately. Um, yeah. What's the, uh, is it happening on other platforms as much as it is on Twitter? Uh, my gut says it's mostly a Twitter thing that I've, at least was I've seen. I think TikTok a little bit as a new hip younger audience usually on it that's more except less offended by that kind of stuff more finds the humor in it more than maybe older generations uh would and so um i've seen a little bit of that on, on tiktok but a lot on twitter i can't remember which was it it was some alcohol brand i can't remember which one but they had they were trending for a while for their uh not safe for work tweets I think it was Pabst Blue Ribbon. Aren't you a Pabst fan? Yes. <laughs> oh, PBR did. Okay. I found an article anyway. Yes. Where they, uh, it was back in, um, <laughs> like at the beginning of the year. Yeah. It was, it was like <laughs> wet January ad campaign. <laughs> Because so many people try to do, those of us who consume alcohol, a lot of us will try to not drink in January as like a kind of, um, you know, way to better our health, right? And it's usually dry January, but they were celebrating wet January, which is already a little problematic. And then, and then they had, what did the tweet say? Something like, not drinking this January, try eating ass. <laughs> it's just so, that is, that's, that was a little too far. That was a little aggressive. And you know what? You know, maybe I have a problem and I need to stop drinking. Is that the right message you should be sending? No, drink responsibly, not eat ass. Half says X-rated tweet came from employee that poor judgment got fired for. Oh, they got fired? They did get fired. Wow. Even some exposure on the way out the door. I feel like, well, that probably is a little bit too far. Uh, I feel like a beer brand can get away with more than some other brands. Therefore, That's probably true. true. But when it, when it to toes the line of like, pushing problematic, unhealthy behavior, that's when yeah. 
Yeah, I think it it crosses a little bit of a line. We still we we're marketers, right? We still have some morals. At least we should. Well, today is Battle of the Brands. Couldn't think of a cheesier name, but uh, it's very fitting. I think what we're going to do today. Okay. I guess we can make it a competition. If anything, it's just a, at least at least a discussion. But I, I'm competitive. We can keep going to see who wins. But um, because <laughs> we're both so impartial. Yeah, we don't have someone here to do it, so we should have included a guest judge for this episode. But we're going to go through a few different categories um, uh, of, of brands, and each of us has selected a brand that the other does not know what it is. Probably different, maybe the same brand in that category that we think is the that when we plan this, we decided to call it the strongest brand. Now, when I interpreted that word strongest, I was thinking not necessarily my favorite brand or like the one I most resonate with, but for me, I felt like it has a distinct brand, recognizable, that there is a brand to be recognized and it's generally well-received. Like someone might have a super strong, terrible brand, like everyone hates that brand or something. I think through those. So whether or not it's something I really resonate with, if I can recognize there's clearly a, a strong brand identity there and, and some loyalty, that's what I rate. How did you interpret strong brand? Yeah, I, I probably, I, as I was thinking about it, I might have leaned a little too heavy into personal preferences. And I have this gut feeling I'm going to lose, but... <laughs> I do feel strongly about these brands. And so I think if I feel strongly about them, others do too. And that must mean that they do have a strong. Um, I, I did also agree with you that like, I, I didn't go for the ones that have a really strong brand, but in a, maybe a negative way. Mm -hmm. There are some of those. Should be fun to talk about negative brand perception at some point. Yeah, definitely should. So before we get into categories, I'm going to jump to a little bit of a nerdy moment from my past. I guess it's still my present because I still have them. Back in the day when I was a younger man, I thought it was going to be cool to wear belt, belt buckles. Like, not like a, not Western cowboy belt buckles, but just like hipster belt buckles. And uh, this is a, a brand. I have these two belt buckles. <laughs> This is fascinating. I love everything about this. I don't think I've ever... I These are I've, huge. Huge, right? I think I wore this a couple times, maybe two or three times back in the day. Maybe more than that, but I don't remember wearing it a lot. This one was so big, I don't know if I ever wore this, maybe once. Um, and it would quite stand out on a on a young man's belt, of course. But uh, I realized that I didn't think they were that cool to wear anymore. And I stopped wearing them, but they were sentimental and unique and maybe, I don't know, or something down the road. So I still have them. My Jumpman, Jordan brand, belt buckles. I don't even know if they're made. I don't think it's like a Jordan product. I think someone just maybe made this and like sold it online. I don't even know where I got these from. I don't remember. Yeah, each guy is a little bit different. One of them's got some details. 23 on it. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't like he sticks out from the, I don't know why he's in his shield. It's like a Raiders logo kind of or something. This is a little more true to form, but check out the dude's hand. Check out like his little webbed flipper. Oh man, that's <laughs> that's like cartoon ham fist guy. <laughs> so, anyways, off topic, but I just remembering this was some some jump man, some Jordan brand affinity I had back in the day. But I really feel like I know you a little bit better now. Yep, yep. That was that was special. Thank you for sharing that. You could literally use that shield one as a shield. Yeah, that thing's huge. It's hefty. Okay. So the first category is pizza chain. I'm imagining it appears on the bottom of the screen now or something, but pizza oh. chain, pizza brand. I said mm. because you know you might have some really good pizza you had at one little like restaurant or something in some city I've never heard of. We can't really compare that very well. So well known pizza chain. I will let you go first and submit your Submission for strongest pizza chain brand. Oh, I have to go first? I'll go first on the next one. You can go this one. Okay, all right. Okay, well, so th this one was tough for me because I like pizza and I eat a lot of it. And my wife and I tend to argue over where to get it. This is not 
my favorite by any means, but I do feel like it has the strongest brand slash at least brand identity. Drum roll, Little Caesars. Bro, well, I put Little Caesars. Yes! Really? Wait, 100%. I was like, not the best pizza in the world. I'm not gonna claim it's the best pizza. I don't think. I think well, it was speaking cheap. of toilets, mm. not that bad. It's pretty mm. good. five dollars. Oh. Like it's mm. cheap, but I always compare other products, like other foods. Like, man, this cost twenty dollars. I could have got four little Caesar's pizza for this. Like, that's how I compare like quant- quantity over. Qu- anyways, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Okay, you went first though. So you explain your reasoning. I'll see if I had the same. So, the, part of the, my reasoning is I feel like especially back and maybe this is a generational thing but at least back in like the 90s they had the really strong pizza pizza campaign pizza 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 pizza, pizza. pizza. with the little caesar's character and he's still kind of a mascot he still shows up in their brand marks and stuff but like that sticks with you mm-hmm. and that bright orange color very unique for pizza it doesn't say Italy and its color scheme at all, like Papa John's does, and Domino's is recognizable but boring. Um, I feel like Little Caesars has character to it; it's very recognizable. I feel like they. This is maybe a little less branding and more just market placement. I think they leaned into where they fit in the market. They're not the best pizza. They're not. They're fast food pizza. More so than Domino's or Papa John's. And those two are like, kind of like on the edge of like better pizza, but also not super good local type pizza. They sell a ton of pizzas. And yeah, you yeah. know, the whole hot and ready thing. And, we, and they, yes. yeah, only they'll rotate through a new flavor here or there. Pretty much it's the same stuff where it's like Domino's and Pizza Hut are always coming up with like new stuff or new, you know, breadstick size or stuffed crust this. And we'll see. Mm-hmm. Like, pizza and it's hot and it's ready and that's what they yeah. do yeah yeah that's a great point their their product naming is really good hot and ready really easy to remember you know it's there and it sticks in your head then like when they added like hot and ready but then they're like a little bit better it was like extra most bestest yeah which i still still stuck with me i know exactly what that is yeah, yeah. And did you, maybe you already knew this, but I don't know if the people haven't realized the little mascot guy, the little toga, it has the like, little design on his row thing is LC Little Caesars. You notice that? What? No. Oh, yeah. Look at that. That's that's nice. Yeah. And Very so nice. not only are they, do I think, I, I pretty much agree with everything you said, my same, the same reason that uh, <coughs> most of them might pick them as well. And they've actually had kind of. It's not only not only have they been pretty consistent, but they're they kind of made some wins recently. They uh, are now the official pizza of the NFL. Um, so they're getting some some real uh, coverage on that, or some some airtime on NFL games and stuff. Wonder how much that cost? More than five dollars. Yes, but with the amount of five dollar pizzas they're going to sell during games, yep, I think it'll make up for it. But, but having said that, you're right. Like I remember those those pizza pizza. I haven't seen an actual video ad. I don't think in a while from Little Caesars. At least on the pizza. Same. Pizza. Maybe I've seen like a big little. I know they they do mailers. I got stuff in the mail from them. If you live near one, they usually send some direct mail pieces out. So yeah. Anything else to add about Little Caesars? I guess we're not going to. <laughs> no, I like I I don't think I just want to remark it that I don't think I've seen any real heavy marketing from them aside from the NFL thing that you mentioned lately. And yeah, but I've probably seen Papa John's commercials and mm-hmm. Domino's ads. I don't think they've leaned real heavily into like celebrity spokes and folks, people. Mm-mm. I'm not, maybe they've done something I'm not aware of, but like they've just kind of been consistent and uh, yeah. Recognizable. Yeah. Good on you, little Caesars. Okay. Insurance company. This was the least interesting to me. You just don't like thinking about it. <laughs> this one was no. one of the harder ones. It's really. insurance. It's boring. It's kind no. of boring. And I actually, so I'll go first this time. 
as I read my listing, I actually like regret. Like, I don't want this to be my pick because I've kind of been. I think I think some other uh, brands have done things that are better recently, or things that I really like. But long term, consistent, and and recognition, I'm saying Geico, and a whole bunch of. Th- I mean, the Gecko, right? We all know the Gecko. Whether it's played out or not, like you recognize that that's consistent. Everyone knows their line, which they kind of move away from a little bit, but 15% or more can take 15 or 15 minutes or more can take 15% on current or more on current insurance. I just botched that entirely. Sorry, Geico. 15 minutes or less can save you 15% or more. Is that the, that's how it goes? Yeah, that sounds right. On car insurance. So, so strong a brand you can't even remember this, this I slogan. Disprove myself. Yeah. It's somewhat rememberable, I guess. Um, and you think back to some things that you think is boring, Kate. You remember so easy a caveman can do it? It's so easy to use Geico.com, a caveman could do it. <laughs> what? Oh, no. I, not cool. I did not no. know you were there. Yeah. I could know. I could change. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All the gecko ads, Geico. I'll tell you why. Because people trust advertising icons. Some bloke tells you to go to geico.com and you're like, really? And just do my UB. But a gecko, he can be trusted. The, I don't know what they call it, what the name of the campaign is, but the format was always like, everyone knows that. Huh. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Everybody knows that. Well, did you know Pinocchio was a bad motivational speaker? I look around this room. And I see nothing but untapped potential. You have potential. You have... Oh, boy. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Remember those ads? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Yeah, lots of different different campaigns they've had over the years that have been very consistent, memorable, some of them pretty funny. And uh, name recognition, everyone kind of knows. And as far as while we're focusing on brand, as far as actual market position and market um, share, they're one of the top leading leaders in actual running the, the insurance game, so to speak. But for that reason, although I like some other ones, and maybe I'll let you share yours first, and then I can maybe call out a few examples. I like some other stuff recently people have done, but Geico's just kind of been running the game for a while, I feel like. And so... I'm going to play Geico. You might win this one. I think your brand is stronger. I thought about Geico. I opted out just because I'm, I, the Geico is played out. I'm over it. I can't. Okay. I, every time I see that little green guy, I'm just, I, I just want to punch him. Like, I don't care. But I can't do that because he's fake. Because <laughs> he's Because <laughs> he's fake. Uh, I I went with Progressive. I feel like while their individual campaigns have not been as quite as consistent as Geico's have been, I do feel like they're less obnoxious. Um, I feel like Flo as a character. You know, that comes with concierge claim service, local response claim service, and 24-7 live support, all at no extra charge. Wow. Wow! I know! I say it louder. Have a great day. Um, was recognizable and consistent for a good long time, and they've started to phase her out in favor for a couple of other people, but they've kept it relatively consistent. However, I don't think any of the ads have been as strong as Geico's as far as, like, memory Memorability. 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 Is that a word? Anyway, I don't. I don't think any of them have been that strong, but I do think they've been consistent and recognizable. The brand look is always very clear. Yeah, you can always recognize a progressive commercial just because of like the the blue and white, and I feel like their logo is very clean. And I and yeah, I like it. Point for your for progressive actually, I really consider that because they're as far as recall, they're more they are more consistent. 
I only listed, listed a bunch of Geico campaigns that have happened over the year, and they're all different. Like you might you might remember the ad, but not remember that the cavemen and the gecko and the uh, funny cutaway scenes and the people frozen in place, even though the camera is still rolling, but they're not. Anyways, but, mm-hmm. makes sense to those who have seen it. Hopefully, um, <laughs> all those things have been Geico ads, but you wouldn't necessarily remember that they're all Geico ads because they're all different formats. We're progressive. Those people in their white apron, they progressive, and that's been a consistent thing. Maybe it is a little bit easier to track that. But it's funny you say that, though, because the way you feel about the get-go, I felt about Flo and the, that crew. I'm, I, I, they annoy me, but I can't deny. Heck, I feel the get-go's been around longer, though. Yeah, but he's not as annoying. Flo annoys me. Oh, like, my gosh. He's so annoying. <laughs> Screw that little British-talking gecko. He's I, not British. Uh, he's like... Is he Australian? He's, he's got an accent. Wow, oh, wait. Is also, he, why does he have an accent? Why? It doesn't matter because probably because for Americans it makes him stand out a little bit more. But is, wait, what's his name? Does he have a name? Oh, Martin. He's named after the advertising agency that created him. Martin Agency. That seems selfish. <laughs> Actually, I don't think I hate the gecko as much as I hate some of the Liberty Mutual ads. We move with the green. No, they're not fun. Yeah. So here's some honorable mentions. We can debate which one was one, but I, I mean, State Farm's done a lot of stuff, and they've, I think they've, I think State Farm, and I'm not, they're, they're a strong brand. They're doing good. They don't need my help right now, probably. But the reason I would say I give a little less points, and if they want to take my two cents, if they ever see this, they've kind of missed an opportunity a little bit where, like, they, they had like the Jake from State Farm thing, and then like, and then continuing the character and some of the stuff they've done is funny. Like, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there popping, but they've kind of, I feel like, milked that Jake from State Farm too much, and with these celebrity appearance ones that just aren't that funny. Where it was funny the first time, and then it wasn't funny anymore. Yeah, like I'm, I'm fine with Jake still being like your spokesperson. Like, have have Jake be your guy if you want, but do more things with him besides just having celebrities show up. They have, they have they, for better or for worse, they have a, they're one of the, the insurance providers that has a lot of um, celebrity like partners. Like, hmm. I don't know if I, I watch a lot of sports. And so I know at least, in, at least in the NBA, I think they're a partner. They have lots of NBA guys that show up regularly in their ads. And I, and I, me being a fan of the NBA, I'm just like, okay, something else now. But anyways, <laughs> So, I kind of forgot all about Jake from State Farm. I don't. I feel like they pick and choose when they run their ads. Like it's not as consistent or as broad as the others. Marvel mentions as well. Uh, farmers apparently like the Hall of Claims. They have all these different things that are crazy situations that you would need a claim for. You know a thing or two because you've seen a thing or two. Um, apparently, all those claims are based on real, actual claims they've received. Little fun fact. Um, Allstate and uh, it's Allstate that does mayhem, right? Or is that not Allstate? Yes, yes. Okay, should we go to the next one? Unless I guess I don't know. We didn't pick a winner on that one, but I'm still sticking with Geico. But I can see it. I can see a case for progressive. They're very close. Yeah, yeah. I could go either way. Honestly, Geico maybe just because their ads are a little more memorable, even if it's a little less. Visually consistent. Who would in a fight, Flo or the Gecko? <laughs> Flo. <laughs> it's a freaking Gecko. She just step on. <laughs> he's he's knows what the Gecko. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. Next section, we gotta get going. I guess we're taking too long. Here we go. Ice cream. So before you answer, you're gonna go first again this time. Before you answer, though, did you think this as like? Um, a place like a restaurant where you go and get ice cream, like an ice cream bucket on the shelf or a container bucket, whatever you call it. I, I actually, my two favorites were one of each, okay. and I ended up going with the, the restaurant location. Hmm, okay, I yeah. So that'll be that'll be, that'll be a good debate. Okay, interesting. Well, I mean, it was really close, but because I wasn't sure what we were doing. So right. That's good. I like them both for different reasons, but okay. Give me your number one, and we can see. Yeah, what's what is it? This one 
This one, I, this one could be slightly more because of personal affinity, but uh, Cold Stone Creamery. Well, I don't do like big marketing campaigns. I do think that their product is consistent. Their brand look and style is consistent. They've got naming conventions for their products that are pretty identifiable and unique. Um, like the different sizes, like it, love it, gotta have it. And then at least back in the day, they, uh, they had the whole like stupid singing thing. Like if you tipped, then it would make the people <laughs> making ice cream sing. I don't know if they still do that or not. Actually, I don't go to Cold Stone very often, but not good stuff. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they've spent a lot of their their uh, strategy has been into like shopping malls and stuff. Which shopping malls have kind of been dying out. But I think back in like the heyday of them, it was a thing that you would see a lot while you're out and about. Like it was kind of an experience to go. That could sense? be, but I always equated like Dippin' Dots with malls. Oh, okay. Hmm. Anyways, that's a good point. I and they 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 do sell some stuff on the on the shelves though. Like you can buy some. Yeah, stuff. they. I think you can buy some stuff in stores now, and you can like walk into a Cold Stone and buy a cake, or you can buy a quart of ice cream or whatever. Fun fact: I used to work at a Cold Stone um, back in college. I I worked at a Cold Stone for like three and a half years. Wow. Yeah. Did you sing and stuff? That, that's how I paid my way through school, was working for Goldstone. Yeah. Did, you, did you sing the song? Oh, yeah. And there are certain, like, 80s, early 90s cheesy pop songs that we had variations of that I can't hear, like, the real version of without getting PTSD of <laughs> singing. Because it was in a college town, and so, like, on, like, a Thursday, Friday night, we'd get, like, the the drunk folks coming in to get their ice cream after hitting the bars. And then they just thought it was funny. And the, there were a couple of times that they would just stand by the register and like put a dollar in, make us sing a song, put another dollar in, make us sing a song. It was so humiliating. And I hope for current cold stone employees that they don't make you do that anymore. They, as long as they know what they're signing up for, I guess. Right. That's funny. Yeah, I guess. We had a couple of people who were like really into it. They really <laughs> enjoyed doing the singing stuff. I was not one of those people. Okay, well, I think I'm already leaning towards you maybe winning this one. This one was hard for me. One, there's a lot of different ice cream brands. And like, I feel like they have different things they're known for, like quality versus like, sure. like uh, recognition versus a uh, variety of flavors and Anyway, so I wait. Wait, can I guess which one you're gonna pick? Sure. Ben and Jerry's. No. Oh, okay. Ben and Jerry's. I feel like I mean, they're a contender. They're up there. They're they're very they're in pop culture a lot. They I like, think reference in movies and like that might be maybe a better option. The only reason I didn't pick them is I feel like and again this is it's hard to separate personal perception. And I haven't gone and surveyed the world, so maybe people will disagree with sure. me. You haters can get me in the comment. But um, I think they've fallen off a little bit. They're a little bit the older generation's like has been brand. They're, they're not hip and cool anymore. Like they're not, not there. Like they're kind of like, oh yeah, classic. They've been around for a while. They're always there, but they're not like trendy anymore. Yeah, that's fair. Okay, so who is it? I put Halo Top, which is maybe too early and too trendy and not necessary. So they're, the reason I put them as a strong brand is, is mainly the, the, all the points that I gave them are almost entirely dedicated or, or come from that idea of having a distinct brand. I actually haven't even had their ice cream, I don't think. Um, <laughs> I, I don't think I have either, actually. Kind of the brand is like the healthy ice cream, healthier, as long as it's like super healthy, right? But they, yeah. have, they uh, have lots of protein in their ice cream, and they have a surprising small amount of calories like an entire pint will have like less than 300 calories in some of those which oh sure brand is like that's one serving much less you know you know five times after a pint so it's still ice cream but it's not as uh 
unhealthy. And so I have heard that there are people who like are, you know, ice cream lovers can tell the difference. And it's like, yeah, it tastes healthier. And so some people don't think it's as good. But if you're looking for something healthy and you don't think ice cream is ever an option, I think, again, this is my perception to, for my, my, how the brand exists in my mind. It's kind of the only game in town if you want healthier ice cream. And it's not disgusting, nasty, like it's eating cardboard. Like it's, it's ice cream. It might not be as sweet and rich as some of the other ones. And they have a very nice packaging that has like these kind of gold metallic accents and this, this idea of like halo top and like the play on like halo and heaven and like this divinely, um, heaven of the gods kind of thing. Like this, this, this gift from the gods type thing. They had a few ads with some, some funny online ads where like, um, they have like the devil and like an angel or something that are trying to get you to make decisions. And anyway, so they just kind of have a funny brand about, about that. And then, uh, they're, um, building up more and more shelves. I see, I see a lot of them in the stores now. So maybe it's kind of, maybe they've already, if, if, if they maxed out now and they're not going to grow any more market share, then maybe they're actually not that strong. But assuming they're still continuing to grow, I think they have the potential to be a quite recognizable brand. Assuming people want to eat healthier ice cream. If you want to just pick out on the unhealthy stuff, then I guess that's not your move. So anyway, so I, but I think, I think Cold Stone is more established, more well known, has more history. Um, that's probably, which is funny because like, I feel like on the, sh on the, on the store shelves in the freezer section, I feel like Cold Stone is not as strong there as they are like as the restaurant experience. You go to Cold Stone, people are like, "Let's go to the store and buy some Cold Stone from the from Walmart." You know? Yeah, that's true, and, and they probably do that to protect their franchisees and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But I will, I mean, to give Halo Top some points, some credit, like never had them. I did not in my mind, <laughs> probably because I'm not a super healthy conscious eater, <laughs> or at least not at the moment, like had no concept of them being like a healthier option. Mm. Um, but I did, I could see, I could see the carton when you said halo top, like I could, you know, it was there. I could see it. So even though I don't have much personal experience with the brand, like their visual style is very strong. Yeah. They look kind of appealing in the store. It's not kind of just your standard, like, you know, Blue lid with white white box with the standard you no know, flavor across. They have a nice appealing. It looks like a high quality packaging. I think. Yes, yeah. kind of minimalist, yeah. and yeah. Whereas I feel like that's maybe that's why they stand out a little bit because I do think that some shelving ice cream brands go a little maximalist. Like there's a lot of the toppings and fillings that are kind of like falling everywhere and explosions of sugar but less it's not because of the nature of what it is it's not it's not catering to kids or anything i don't think kids are walking by asking for halo top it's it's not like the you know super fudge crunch extreme you know it's not like that it's like we have refined flavors small portions and like yeah feel to an adult audience but yeah i'm so having said that i think they're a good brand but i think i would give you the the nod on that one i think i think Cold Stone's a little more established has a little more brand affinity you have a, a feelings about it a little bit more about it better. So I'll, I'll I'll take that win. You can have Geico. I'll t I'll take I'll take Colson. Okay. This next section is a little bit unique in the sense that it's not actually a true brand, but more of like a perceived reputation. We're we're talking about dog breeds. <laughs> you know, every every breed is kind of like brand. It has a certain uh, reputation or feeling about it or expectation. I guess. Anyway, so. So this one I thought could very easily be uh, we might pick the same one. And actually it was harder than I thought it was gonna be because I'm this like, this was really hard. I got like two that I'm like hmm, I'm gonna decide which one to pick after I hear yours. And it's <laughs> and it's funny, here, like, although it's not truly like a real brand in like a organization sense, that I realize like people there's lots of dog brands that have a really strong audiences. Like a real like you can like almost like you can use dog like as a pet, as like a demo, like a targeting demo. Like this this audience, Persona A, owns this kind of dog, and then we're targeting this person, and they have this. Like it helps describe the person that owns them. Like you, it's very. Yes. So very I'm like, true. Oh, I guess all of them have a strong brand to somebody. So I try to think about like again, the most like universal kind of like. I picked Golden Retriever, just like 
Sure. Every, it's, everyone likes them. They're not necessarily the most exciting, but some of the ones that have more like that people love even more also have a negative perception a little bit. Like some people like really love, you know, um, what's a dog people love? like some people really love like their pit bulls. Some people hate pit bulls. Like they're like the worst dog, right? Some people right. Really love poodles. Some people think they're nasty and gross. Like, they, so like, that's why I don't know. There's there's definitely some bigger extreme. I feel like golden retriever. Everyone just kind of thinks, yeah, it's a good family friendly dog. They're nice. They're easy. They they're attractive. They so I almost picked a different one, but I'll see if it's twenty years one. So that, that was my number one. What was yours? Well, okay, I'll tell you what. I'm not going to go with this one just to keep things interesting. But the one of the two I was thinking about were just labs in general. And yeah, two, I think was a lab. Yeah. Yeah. I, th- I think that's too, for sake argument's sake is too close to golden retriever. I think they're, they're both very they're on the positive same. affinities and, and everything. But I, the first one I wrote down, so if we're going to go that way was, was Pitbull. Okay. Yeah. Because it has a very, very strong brand and you either love it or you hate it. It is what it is. It's- and you kind of, Love it or you hate it. So people love their pit bulls. People hate pit bulls. I I used to be scared of pit bulls. I think now I think they're kind of awesome and I kind of want one. But I mean, it's do people does anybody love golden retrievers as much as pit bull lovers love pit bulls? That's a good question. Because everyone is like, yeah, golden retriever, like. No one dislikes golden retrievers, I don't think. But does anybody like really, really love like you get bumper stickers based on that? Pit bull people, it's like a life, it's like a it's like a personality trait if you're into pit bulls. Yeah, that's true. They have like pit mom, it's like a hashtag. I'm a pit mom. These women that own pit bulls, have you seen that? No. Yeah, it's like a thing. I'm I'm not that crazy into pit bulls. But yeah, that's interesting. I don't know. So then then that comes down to which is actually the stronger brand. Is it the one that's polarizing and has like probably a smaller, but more loyal following using dog terms there. Which one would you want to invest in? Pitbulls. High risk, high reward. Yeah. Yeah. That, and because of the loyalty, think of all the merchandising, just like you were saying. Dang, that's true. You got me. I was going to still argue for mine, but like if you were to make Golden Retriever merchandising and Pitbull merchandising, you'd sell more Pitbull stuff. Yeah. And people, some people would hate it and say, no way. But dang, you got me, I think. There's a little, a little lesson for you. Being universally okay, like lukewarm, isn't as exciting as a We talked about liquid death, right? Some people right. are like, what the heck? It's getting my water. That's weird and over the top. Or some people think it's, they've even, they've even pushed some not safe for work stuff in the past. Like they've done <laughs> so good. So good. you can sell merchandise. People, people are wearing stuff. That's just a stupid water brand. Not stupid, like a good brand, but like it's just water. No one's walking around with Aquafina on their shirt or like, <laughs> dang, you got me. Okay. Uh, yeah. If we're, if we're going water, I mean, I think the one like safe water brand that has a strong brand would be like Fiji. I feel like, I've got a very clear, identifiable thing. And I remember in high school, it was like there were, there were like Fiji girls. You just knew they were like the dr- a little bit feminine, right? Like I think more girls drink Fiji. Like Liquid Dad's a little more dude friendly and Fiji's a little more, but it's not bad. I like guess, yeah. Yeah, but it, it was like the bougie water. Yeah, like, it's, yeah. yeah. Just the fact that it was in a square shape was like, hmm, this is different. And yeah. Voss also was a thing too, but I don't know how many people like got Voss. Remember that? Oh yeah. I mean, they're still there. It's like the, it was like a bigger, thick cylinder. Yes, I've seen it. I haven't tried it though. It's funny how okay, they all. Maybe we should do like a water testing episode. Well, Evaluate you, their brands and taste them. Did you see the ad that Liquid Death just did, where they had these two guys that left bad reviews? Did you see those guys? No. Liquid Death pulled. I mean, I'm assuming it's real. I don't, it would be lame if they faked it. But I think two guys who left reviews that were negative for Liquid Death, like not being that good, some said it's like the worst water I've ever tasted, or this is the, basically along the lines that it's really it's like the worst. Yeah. So like, I contacted these guys and I soon paid them to be in an ad where they had a bunch of waters lined up and put bags over them and said, if you can pick 
liquid death has the worst water and you get a thousand dollars if you get it wrong you get tased <laughs> and they were hooked up to like these, these chairs that like would tease them and to like taste all the waters and stuff and said i think this liquid neither of them picked the right one and got tased like and, like freaked out and stuff and then uh and uh, yeah, at the end, they're like, well, I guess it's actually not that bad. And, like, it's not the worst I've ever had. And then, so then they end with, like, he gave himself this, like, award, like, liquid death, not the worst water uh, ever. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. That is awesome. So they had, like, a water taste test recently. But... Wait, let's look. Like, we got to do a quick score count here. Okay. I think it's. Caesars, so it's a draw. Uh-huh. Well, I got Geico. You got Golden Retriever. And pit bulls, I think. So I think it's two to one. Okay. Whoops. Two to it's three. all down to this. So I guess I can't win either way. The last one is celebrity personal brand, which again is not the exact same kind of brand as like a pizza chain or something, but people have a brand. Um, we often in our line of work will ask people, you know, if you're talking about your brand, what kind of pers- uh, celebrity or a persona kind of embodies that brand? Or who, who do you think would be a good spokesman for you? So we've used this question before to help us identify like a core essence or a personality trait because sometimes it's hard to say in, in like in human terms what your brand is but you can point to someone and say like that like that person is kind of like what our brand is and help us understand that so anyways this was hard for me because similar yeah. to Starbucks, there are lots of people with lots of personal brands and i'm like gosh dang it, i don't know I know, when you when you add me when you added that one to the list and i was looking at it i just was like i could pick like 15 different people I actually don't. I, so I, I kind of cheat. I don't know if I'm going to pick you. I have one, two, three, four, five, six people written down. <laughs> I'm not sure which one I'm going to say. So let me ask you first this. Did you, um, not that it really matters, but did you, uh, consider people who have passed away who, like, had a brand, or is it only current people? That you uh, the person I picked is current. Okay. But I wasn't, I, I, I wasn't really, like, Purposely excluding dead people, but right. mine are almost all. Yeah, I have one person that I was considering who has passed away now, but um, I don't think that's going to be my. The problem. I'm going to pick one. I'll have one, but like, I, I any of these people, I can make an argument for. I think, and I bet we have. I don't know. So you go first, and I think I'll pick which one I want to pick. But I'll mention. I more. bet if mine's not on your list, I don't know how. Well, I haven't watched but, any war films, so I'm pretty uncultured, right? But well, no, you you know who this person is, and I, I did go a little bit more of the polarizing route again. Oh, okay, but that also has strong fans. I, I stayed out of politics. I think we could pick some really strong brands in politics, but I, I did stay out of that. <laughs> um, Gwyneth Paltrow. Hmm. Let me describe what I think her brand is, and you can this is weeping. I mean, she's a movie star, a lot of movies and stuff, but she also has her company Goop, which is about. I say it's a, a wellness brand, kind of, but it's all it's it's kind of a fringe. Well, like it's experimental wellness. Like there's some, it's mm-hmm. not not all FDA approved wellness. <laughs> <laughs> some something you know, and there's like candles and soaps and rubs and healing crystals i think and all kinds of weird like just things for your body and your and your aura your aura yeah just like yeah. your to align your chakras and your pores and your anyways so which some people think is bogus and crap and that she's just stealing people's money and some people say no it's really good and i like it and it's unique and she's a businesswoman i look up to her um is that what you're talking about? Is polarizing, and you have other thoughts? Yeah, yeah. Just that some people think she's she's just a con artist, but that, and then others are like fully bought into her like extra new age kind of it's wellness stuff. Right? It's not cheap. Yeah, it's pricey, so it's like bougie new age wellness, and some of it's pretty ridiculous. But it's like she's got a following, people who love her products. And while it might not be the biggest cele- the biggest celebrity brand, I think it's a really strong brand. People know when you talk about Goop or when you talk about Gwyneth Paltrow, you know you're talking about something that's a little out there and but also has 
lots of followers and lots of detractors. Um, so I, I totally get everything you're saying about her. I'm a little surprised because I feel like while she does have brand accident, I think, I think there's probably people that have stronger ones. Okay, so I'll give you mine. So I put... It makes me laugh. I put Guy Fieri. Really? Mayor of Flavortown. He's got <laughs> nicknames like that. He's got this consistent persona with like his flame shirt, button-up shirts, his goatee, his bleach blonde, spiky hair, and his sunglasses. He's chill. Everyone likes him. He talks he's like an everyman's dude. He likes eating fast food and the, all and he's, he's his, all his shows. He had multiple shows, Dino Drive-In and Dives and um, other other uh, other uh, programs on the Food Network and stuff like that. And he's like been in memes a lot. Um, I even saw um, just on the, the last election cycle this month, um, someone when people were live tweeting like election results and things like that. Someone said, um, you know, Guy Fieri's been elected, reelected, the mayor of Fra- Flavor Town, like still <laughs> still in office. Um, Anyways, and he just seems like I think he's he's a guy that has like no haters and is uh distinct. Like you see, even if you don't necessarily watch his shows or know how to say his name, like you see that guy. Oh yeah, that's like that's that one guy, the food guy, because he's very distinct and consistent in his persona, the way he dresses and presents himself. That's true. That's a very good point. Personal presentation, he might he might win if that's what we're interesting. I don't know. Does he not have any haters? I kind of always thought he was considered like the trash food network guy that everybody else was better than he was. I mean, he's not a high class fancy. He's not, he's not like a, yeah, he's not a fancy food guy. He's that, but that's why I think like he's, he's the like regular relatable. He's not like eating some food and talking about it with like smelling the wine and something you're never going to like relate to. He's like, yo, check out this chili dog burger taco thing. Burger's dynamite. He's like, yeah, man. And like driving his old school car to the next diner, driving or dive and like hanging, taking pictures of people in the bar and eating wings and drinking beer with them and stuff. And that, that's what I think. Okay. Okay. I think you won this one. I think you did. I think you did. Okay. So we tried it up. And now I could have, I just stopped listening, man. They probably could name a hundred more that are up there. I put Adam Sandler. A little bit sure. polarizing as well. Some people are like, enough with your annoying, dumb comedy movie. Some people don't like him, but lots of people like him, and it's still very distinct. You know when a um, uh, Happy Madison production like comes through, you know what to expect. Yep. Just, so he has a brand. The way he dresses like not nice. Like how he always has like baggy shorts and like a polo shirt on. It just it's very consistent and he's yes. relatable and nice and um I yeah, put that's it's a good one. one. One I put who somebody passed away, but I put Steve Irwin, Crocodile Hunter. Oh, sure. He had a very distinct. I mean, his like he had like a show, which I guess it was his like that was his brand. But like he always had like this that, that same the same clothing on. The way he talked. Yeah, really strong persona. Yeah, yeah. he his tattoo <laughs> that strong persona. Okay, with a stick. Yeah. This one, I don't know. I don't think it's a leading contender. This one is a little bit more. I just put someone that I feel like a lot of people like. I put Jack Black. Um, I don't think he actually has the strongest brand. Like, what is his brand? He has a brand, but it's not as, like, distinct or consistent. Or uh, I don't think it resonates as much as some of the other people I mentioned. Sure. He's a guy, too. little side note. He's been, like, quite active on TikTok. One of the an older guy who's kind of embraced it and has a pretty good TikTok following getting some love on that. Yeah, I've seen one or two. And a bunch of dudes, and not to be sexist, I then put Beyonce is also on there. Uh, yeah. We, maybe she's actually the winner of all this. Maybe she has a stronger one. Because people kind of worship her a little bit. So yeah. We should do a, a Beyonce versus Taylor Swift episode. Beyonce would definitely win in a fight. Yes. Yeah. Who's got the stronger brand, though? I love Beyonce probably more than Taylor. I think Beyonce does still. Really? You think so? And I think it's less. I think she has less negatives than Taylor does. Hmm. That's probably true. Fewer haters. Think about this: How many Taylor Swift fans also like Beyonce? How many Beyonce fans also like Taylor Swift? Boy, I am not part of that Venn diagram at all, so I have no idea. 
I actually don't think I could answer that knowledgeably. That's your next Twitter poll. Who are your, <laughs> do you have any other honorable mentions or anybody, any celebrities you thought about? Oh, know? I mean, like Elon Musk right now has a very strong brand, and I think he's had a pretty strong brand for a while. Um, so he was on the list. Uh, I mean, if we're going to talk politics at all, I think Donald Trump has an extremely strong brand, whether you like it or not. There's no mistaking him and his brand. I also wrote down, but I, I didn't pick him that I wanted to. Ryan Reynolds. Oh, yeah. And But then I was like, well, am I just saying that because he does a lot of marketing and he owns yeah. an agency? And yeah. So I, I, I removed him from consideration. The, the Dwayne The Rock Johnson? Oh, sure. Cool. So yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to think if there's any uh, constructive insight to take from that one. It's one more just kind of for fun. But and it, it, there's different interpretations, obviously, what a strong brand is. And, we, and a lot of these ones, we didn't look at like, you know, revenue created or how many people own a golden retriever versus a pit bull. Like, what, this is just kind of some subjective analysis, but it's fun to do it once in a while. But, um, well, I, I'd say one takeaway that maybe we've come to here and then. If you're one of the the few people that have watched all of our episodes, um, is it, it seems at least in our conversations, and maybe it's us, but I think it's still true that brands that have some sort of polarizing effect tend to um, tend to win out in these conversations. Like they're they they lean into an identity harder than others. And I and thinking back to Geico, even though they're not like aggressive or weird or or anything, like they picked something that was a little a little odd and then just leaned into it for years. And it's paid off. Well you just said as a principle that I feel like in our space, the people who work in the space that is, we all seem to understand. But it's not, it's surprisingly not a giving with the uh, with people who own companies or organizations where they're really afraid about not having everyone love them. And they really want to, not everyone obviously, but in general, I feel like a lot of people are like afraid to, to, to niche down to their audience. And not that you want to be, you don't have to be offensive to be polarizing. You don't have to do like something that's shocking or really upsetting people. But like, it's okay if not everyone loves what you're doing. They're not. They're not going to be your core audience anyway. So a phrase that I heard in school or something. I can't remember where I picked it up from. Sorry if I'm not quoting someone or giving the attribution to them. But um, is to sell. You have your. You have your love group. People love you. You have the hate group who hate you or that's maybe extreme. Just don't like you. And then mm -hmm. in the between you have a swing group that they're kind of indifferent. But you go either way. So the marketing strategy is you sell. You don't even need to sell to the love group that much. Like be a little bit present. Let them know you're there. But don't even spend that much money reaching the love group. They already love you. You sell to the swing group through the eyes of the love group. I mean, whatever people love about you, whatever the reason is, that however they view you with those who love you, convey that to the swing group so they can see that you in that way mm. and help them become the love group. Don't even bother. Don't bother reaching those who don't like you. Not worth your dollars. You're not going to convert many right. of them. It's going to be a lot more expensive. And don't focus that much on the love group either. That one's a little more controversial. People will be like, well, I want to, you know, still market to them. And I would say that's good. But like the majority of your dollars or, or the best bang for your buck, I would say, is sell to those who are not quite fans of you yet, but could be. Yeah. I think that's especially true for more established brands. I think with new brands, you do have to find that love group and try to grow that love group and then yeah. expand into the swing group. But, but man, that's hard to do. That is really hard to do. And I, th and I think the reason we don't see it a lot in our work is it's scary to pick something that's strong. It's hard to, because you, you do risk like alienating someone for something but like even something as simple as the like halo top really strong creative and brand presence it's not polarizing but it is so different than every other ice cream that it's immediately recognizable yeah. so 
I, and I don't think that a, a visual identity that strong is necessarily going to alienate anyone. It's just going to be different. Yeah. And, and therefore like, you're going to remember it. Yeah. Exactly. And going back to the tweet we talked about at the beginning from Campax, well, I'm not necessarily advising to do something like that. Like you have to do that in that way. And I don't know, again, I, I don't know, I'm torn on if that's a good idea or not. But what can, what I think should be considered in that specific little situation that's current right now is that as big as that is, for better or for worse, a year from now, I think it's not going to really affect that much. I, I, I know I'm, I could be proven, proven wrong down the road. Maybe they'll tank after this or they'll blow up after this. But like a tweet, something like that to just test the water, see what the response it's not make or break sometimes. Like, you can yeah, it's put, not as risky as you might think it is. Yeah. For that week that you're trending, you might be like, oh my gosh, what do we do? Or celebrating. And either way, the good or the bad, it's still going to kind of fade. And so, consistency is where a brand comes from. And so, a place like social media, if you have the reach, you're starting out like we are with this channel. We don't have a lot of like, Testing to be, you know, we have a lot. Of, we need to do more testing and get a bigger audience yes. to know what's resonating. But if you're Tampax and apparently we have a lot of followers, I don't know why you'd follow Tampax on Twitter. Like, what do you want to know about? <laughs> Anyways, but if you are, they have a lot of followers and uh, they can put that out there. And I maybe they'll do more of this now or they'll avoid it. But yeah. Anyways, I think we just solve the world's problems, the world's branding problems. Everybody just needs to. Not everybody needs to be okay not being everything to everyone. That's yeah. okay. Okay, Camden, this week's sponsor comes to us from our Twitter daddy, Elon Musk. <laughs> Twitter daddy. He actually asked me to, to say that. Yeah, he's, he's sponsoring episode four here um, to encourage everyone, all of our listeners, to not abandon Twitter. During this time of turmoil, it'll be okay. Smash that like and subscribe. <laughs> yeah. All right, bye. <laughs>